What's going on guys? PC here and welcome to my first look and unboxing of the Dreamcast Dream Eye Camera. This is an accessory for the Dreamcast that was released in 2000 exclusively to Japan and could very well be the coolest accessory for the Dreamcast. This thing could do so many different things. Uh, you can use it as a digital camera. You just put a couple AAA batteries in it, bring it anywhere you want, snap some pictures, bring it back to your Dreamcast, plug it in, do some basic editing in the Visual Park software that's included with this. Uh, you can even put some different stickers on top of the picture and uh, email them off to people, which is very cool. Uh, you can also use it as a webcam. Uh, you can take 27 second video clips, uh, take pictures on the Dreamcast itself, as well as, you know, in digital camera mode. Uh, and you can also do video chat, which is pretty awesome. Obviously, that no longer works today because the servers are long gone. But uh, still, back in the day, that would have been really, really cool. And uh, as far as I know, I'd say it's probably the first implementation of video chat on a game console. It just goes to show you how innovative the Dreamcast was. But uh, this even had uh, different applications in uh, different games. So uh, I, I, as far as I know, only Jet Grind Radio or Jet Set Radio used uh, the Dream Eye camera. You could take pictures uh, using the Visual Park software or just in digital camera mode, I think, and uh, then import them into Jet Grind or Jet Set Radio and use them as graffiti, which is pretty awesome. But uh, yeah, this is a really, really cool accessory for the Dreamcast, and I'm going to unbox this thing and show you what's inside. And then I'll try it out, show you the Visual Park software and all that. So let's get to it. Okay, so before we get to the actual unboxing, let's take a look and see what's on the outside of the box. Now, the Dream Eye camera actually came in two different box designs, this one being the later version. The original version looked like this. And as you can see, it's a lot more colorful, has a bunch of animated characters on the front, and just stands out a lot more than this design does. I assume they changed it because they wanted it to match the other Dreamcast accessory boxes that were out at the time, including the Dreamcast controller and keyboard, both of which had a very similar simplistic design to them, including the sketch outline of what's included in the box on the front, in this case the Dream Eye camera and the headset. But I guess it's more of a personal preference thing. Some people may prefer the original, more animated, colorful styles, and some people may like the simplistic design. But uh, anyway, let's take a look and see what's on the rest of the box. I actually have a translation of the Japanese text, thanks to my good buddy Dreamcast Gaga, who I've mentioned before. He has his own website where he posts Dreamcast articles, as well as has a store where you can buy Japanese Dreamcast games and accessories. I highly recommend you go check that out. I'll put a link in the description below. So on the right side of the box, we have a list of the contents and the features of the camera. So the contents are the DreamEye unit, Dreamcast mic, stand, connecting cable, DreamEye exclusive software, batteries, sticker, and printed instructions. On the right side, list the features of the camera, including TV calls, enjoy talking with your friends while seeing their face, which is obviously the video chat. Uh, video email, send recorded videos and sound via email, and photo email, send photos via email. So on the left side of the box, we have some specs for the camera, including a 1 3rd inch CMOS sensor, 310,000 pixels, 0.5 to infinity focus distance, a 640 by 480 resolution, a 1 10th second exposure time for when you're using the camera as a digital camera with the batteries, and also a 1 4th second self timer, auto white balance, and an image storage limit of 31 images. And finally, on the back of the box, we just have a bunch of boring legal stuff which you probably aren't interested in. Alright, so now for the moment you've all been waiting for, let's open this thing up. So, uh, inside the box here, first off, you have the Dream Eye camera looking at you through this hole, which is pretty cool. Uh, it just says, uh, warning, please ensure to check the important points in the instruction manual before using the device, which is kind of weird. I thought that would say something interesting, like it's watching or something like that, but no, it's just telling you to check the instruction manual before using it. So uh, let's open this up here. 
Inside we have the Dream Eye camera itself, a stand, and the Dreamcast microphone adapter, which looks pretty much just like the one that comes with Seaman, except uh, it's blue and has a weird design on the front. <laughs> and a couple AAA batteries, which I can't even get out here. <laughs> uh, yeah, a couple AAA batteries. I'd be very curious to see if these actually still work. They are sealed, but uh, very old. So underneath there, looks like we have some manuals that are all in Japanese, obviously. That actually has the uh, Dream Eye design from the original box, right on the top right corner there. And some stuff that's probably warning me to do something. <laughs> and more Japanese text and stuff that you're probably not interested in unless you read Japanese. And even if you did read Japanese, it probably is just all boring. But uh, here's the Visual Park Manual, which uh, tells you how to use the software. Some screenshots in there some instructions on how to set it up and all that fun stuff. Underneath there we have the Visual Park CD, which again has that nice cool animated um, design on the front. In the back here we have some more animated characters and Japanese text and stuff. So underneath there we have, it looks like, the headset, which is, you know, same exact type of thing as you'd get with the Seaman microphone, except it's a headset instead of just a little microphone that uh, sticks out of the controller. And on the bottom here, we have, it looks like, a stand. Actually, this is the stand. I wonder what this thing is, then. Um... I think this goes on the side of the camera. I'm not really sure what what the purpose of this is, but uh, yeah, this is the actual stand. It's actually pretty heavy to make sure it doesn't fall. And lastly, we have the DreamEye um, cable here, which actually looks like it connects to the Dreamcast controller port, which is kind of weird. I would think it would connect to the serial port, but I guess it connects to the controller port, which is kind of strange. But uh, anyway, yeah, that's what's inside the box. So uh, next, let's uh, take a look and see what the Visual Park software is all about. Okay, so as you can see, I'm in the Visual Park software here. I have the camera set up above the TV there. Uh, let's go right into it here. I already went into this before just to see where everything was, since everything's obviously in Japanese and I can't read Japanese. Uh, but the first two options here are for video chat and some internet features, so obviously I can't use those, so I'm going to skip those. But the third one down here is the video recorder. So here's the video recorder. As you can see, I have my headset mic on here. It's kind of weird because the foam piece on the end of the microphone just crumbled apart when I took it out of the bag, which is really weird, but uh, eh, the headset still works without it, so whatever. Uh, but yeah, here's the video recorder. You can uh, click this button to record a video. What's going on, YouTube? Dreamcast rules. I'm recording a video with my new Dreamcast DreamEye camera and headset. Pretty awesome. I can record a full 25 seconds of high-quality, almost high-definition video. Whoa! Awesome. The video is about to end here, so peace out, dudes. Okay, so there's the video. I can play it back by clicking the button here. What's going on, YouTube? Dreamcast rules. I'm recording a video with my new Dreamcast DreamEye camera and headset. Pretty awesome. I can record a full 25 seconds of high-quality, almost high-definition video. Whoa! Awesome. The video is about to end here, so peace out, dude. So as you can see, the video quality isn't exactly uh, fantastic, but it's not bad for the time it came out. Uh, it's not too, too bad. There's a lot of motion blur, but, uh, you know, it, it's it's passable. 
Uh, down here you have some options. I'm not sure what this first one is, uh, but the one below that is for brightness, so you can increase and decrease the brightness in the video, which is pretty cool. Uh, below that, I'm not sure, I think this is save. You can save the video to your VMU. Uh, below that, you have some, one of these options is to send the video via email to someone. I'm not sure which one it is, uh, but uh, that's about all you can do in here. Let me exit out of here. I think this is exit. No, this is actually the email thing here. Yeah, so I can email this off to someone if I wanted. This is the contacts list, which you can you can edit that in the from the main menu. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much all that's in the video recorder. So back to the main menu. If you go to the option below that, you have the uh, photo editor. So you can do a whole bunch of cool stuff with photos in this. Okay, so here we are in the photo editing software called Dream Photo Fun. Uh, you can do quite a few different things in here uh, to manipulate photos. You can do a slideshow. You can send photos to people. It's pretty cool. And it's actually powered by Adobe Photoshop, which I didn't know, and that's pretty cool. I couldn't actually figure out how to take pictures with the Dream Eye. I put the batteries that were in the box into the Dream Eye and tried to take some pictures, but for some reason, it just kept beeping at me, and it wouldn't take any pictures, so I'm not sure what I did wrong there. Maybe the batteries that were included in the box were almost dead. I'm surprised, frankly, that they're not completely dead, but uh, yeah, I couldn't figure that out, so I just have to use the stock photos here to show you uh, what this software does, but that's all right. So if I go into the first option here, which is a slideshow, I can click on uh, this option here. And I can go through a bunch of different themes for a slideshow. So I can click on this tropical theme. They all have different music to them and animations. It's, it's actually pretty cool. As you can see, it's like a tropical theme. Pretty neat. Uh, it's a photo I edited earlier with the cat with the warped face and the KO and Merry Christmas and the border and everything. So if I go out of there, I can uh, go over to the photo editor, which is the playground. You can do a whole bunch of really cool stuff in this. If you go to this first option, I think this is some type of auto uh, correct type of thing where it will automatically adjust the brightness of the picture and everything. Uh, this will rotate the photo. I can rotate it all the way around if I want. This next option is for stamps. I can put a bunch of different stamps on the photo, which is cool. Uh, you can do KOs, you can do a bunch of different Sega characters, you can add, I don't know, a bunch of different things like bunny ears to things. I can put the bunny ears on the dog if I want. Uh, I can move it around with the analog stick and I can rotate and resize it with the D-pad. So I can put the bunny ears on this dog here if I want. I can put a bunch of other different stamp things on it. Put this uh, mustache glasses on the other dog. So you can do some pretty cool stuff. Obviously, it lacks most of the advanced photo editing uh, options that you'd see in like Photoshop and stuff like that. But this is more just kind of a fun thing. You, that's why it's called Photo Fun. Obviously, uh, I can add some text to it. Make this like a postcard, so I can add, I don't know, Merry Christmas to it if I want. Kind of a weird Merry Christmas card, but uh, you can do the same stuff with that. I can rotate it and enlarge it if I want, or reduce the size. If I go over here, I can uh, <laughs> I can change the photo in weird ways. I can add swirls. I can make it bulge. Really weird stuff. You can shrink the dog's nose, or <laughs> make him look like a rat if I want. And this I can add photo frames. So I can add that if I want. So that's pretty neat. It's kind of a weird Christmas card, but uh, I can move the picture around and adjust it inside the frame. And save it. And uh, the last option is just to reset the photo, if I want to do that. And you can also save it to a VMU. So you can do some really cool stuff in this. 
Alright, so the last two options on the main menu are nothing really interesting. Uh, this one is settings, and the one below that is to go to the DreamEye website. So really nothing interesting there. I've pretty much shown you the bulk of what you can do with the Visual Park software. Very cool suite of programs. Uh, you can do a whole bunch of different things with your DreamEye, and it's just a lot of fun to play around with. But uh, anyway, that concludes our look at Visual Park. So that's pretty much it, guys. That is my first look and unboxing of the Dreamcast DreamEye camera. Without a doubt, one of the coolest accessories for the Sega Dreamcast. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you have, don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe. This is PC, signing out.